that I know that you want to learn how to make this. Also this. Has artificial intelligence and mid-journey finally caught up with Adobe Illustrator? Well to find out, let's make the first of two designs in today's video, so start by generating a rectangle in Adobe Illustrator. But importantly, we want a gradient stroke, so in the gradient menu select gradient along a stroke. And we want to use a linear gradient for this. For now, have both of the same colour at each side of your gradient slider. Using the rectangle tool and holding down shift at the same time, I'm making this rectangle with a very thick stroke. But this thick boy is about to get even thicker, because we want to remove that centre point of negative space. Increase the stroke weight until it ends up looking something like this. Now we want to use the live corners to round off the corners. And you're going to want to try and actually get this to an absolute least amount possible. So here I'm just really zooming in to push those live corners to the absolute edge. Okay cool, so now we want to head back to the gradient window and just click the slider to add new colour nodes. You don't have to be precise when it comes to the spacing along your gradient slider. And we're going to work in grayscale for this first gradient. And oh yeah, I forgot. Just remember to use the gradient along a stroke setting. Okay, let's speed up this boring section where I just add 50 shades of grey to my gradient. Okay, now let's expand the appearance of this shape and go ahead and press M for the rectangle tool. Holding down Alt Option plus Shift, you can generate a square from the centre, and this time we're going to actually put a fill colour in. Round off the corners once more, and then just take the time to move the edges to the edge of your gradient shape. But once you're ready, we're going to add a gradient to the fill of the top shape, but this time it's going to be a freeform gradient. With this you just click the shape to add your nodes wherever you want, and then you can double click them to adjust the colour of that node. And you want to go for something really vibrant like this for this design. Some would say perhaps cyberpunk-esque. So yeah, when that's actually complete, bring the grayscale shape to the front of all layers and then carefully place it on top. Or you can just simply use the align functions. It's now time to change the transparency mode of this top shape. And what mode you decide to use is completely up to you. Just have a tinker around and see what actually works for your shape. And also you can play around with the opacity as well. And I think I went for hard light in the end for my design. But you just have a look and see what works best for your design. Now to go a step further, you can add a texture effect on the colour gradient shape to give it a more foil kind of look. But because this is actually going to rasterize the shape, the edges can be a bit dodgy and bleed over the other shape. But the question on everybody's lips, will Mid Journey actually outperform Illustrator in this instance? Now I wanted to stay away from using uploaded images to Mid Journey, and I wanted to see if we could actually get there with prompts alone. I started off with maybe the most basic prompt in the entire universe. And yeah, these do look cool, but they're a million miles away from what we actually want. So then I added the word rounded corners into the mix and things were drastically different. At this point, I did have a shred of hope that we could get there with Mid Journey. So here I added a few more prompts and we're starting to get closer, but we're still really far off. And then I began to experiment with 2D as well as trying to capture the circular lighting effect that we did create. But unfortunately, Mid Journey was never able to capture what we wanted. So finally, I decided to add words like tag and label. And yeah, we now have some random typography on our Mid Journey designs, but we're still so far away from what we actually need and want. So, that's round one to Illustrator, but let's design a business card. Now, for a good standard in Illustrator for a business card, I use a document setup of 85mm by 55mm with a 3mm bleed. Business cards do tend to be print, so we need CMYK and 300 ppi. And of course, we need to use two artboards for the front and the back of the business card. And here's a quick tip when you're using this holographic foil effect on a design. Say I wanted to spread the effect on one side of my business card. For that first, just make a square shape. Because look what happens if we actually use a rectangle. Not good. So instead, make a square and then expand it. 
That will then allow you to adjust the shape across your artboard without any anomalies. And as you can see, this is the same previous design and I'm adding that foil effect onto this design. And then came the important part, adding some typography, which I soon changed pretty much countless times. But yeah, for the flip side, I have a stroke line here that's actually angled inside a stroke. And then I came up to outline stroke and then select everything and right click and create that clipper mask. Now we obviously need a background for this design, but after some changes, I finally ended up with this here. I think it looks pretty cool. But what about mid journey when it comes to business cards? Well, just take a look for yourself. Yeah, good luck trying to get a template or something you can even use for a business card via mid journey. Actually, I love to hear your prompts and your ideas for this kind of project. But if you want to actually learn about some AI tools you can use right now totally for free, just click that video on screen. And until next time guys, design your future today. Peace. <laughs>